Hey, Aaron Rabinowitz here for RedGiantTV.com. So I was on vacation over the holiday break and I was watching some TV with my daughter. I think it was a show about math or maybe reading. It might have had something to do with talking trains or maybe flying dolphins. I, honestly, I don't really know. I'm sure it was good wholesome programming though because we were watching PBS. But when I say watching, I, I was really surfing the web while my daughter watched some TV. And Anyway, at some point something caught my eye on the screen and I looked up. And it wasn't anything fancy, but something that I'd been meaning to try in After Effects if I ever got two minutes to do it. And being that I was finally on vacation, well, I had the chance. Uh, what was on the screen looked kind of like this. It was nothing fancy, but I've wanted to play around with this uh, for a bit and see what I could do. Anyway, then I started to experiment, and no, not with psychedelic drugs, thank you very much. Uh, I was experimenting with something better, plugins. Trap Code Shine in particular, and I came up with this. Now, normally, I give pretty polished tutorials, but this one is going to be a little looser so that I can play around with it a bit and you can work along with me. Plus, I got a lot going on right now, so not much time to pre-record. But hey, tickets to this show are free, so quit your complaining. By the way, that actress is from Crowd Control, a library of pre-keyed alpha stock footage, which you can find at my website, allbetsareoff.com, so check that out when you get a chance. Okay, so let's get to it. First thing I want to do is add a solid layer, and I'll choose layer, new, solid, and we'll use this mustard yellow color that's already there, although, you know, you could choose whatever color you want, and I'll click OK, and then I will choose to add in a new shape layer, a poly star, right, so we've got our star tool, just make sure that you don't have the layer selected, right now it's set to mask, so if I did it, it would actually add a mask, I don't want to do that, deselect the layer, and then if I double click on this, it will actually create a star. Now, the color that I want is, let's set the fill color to sort of a medium green, something like that, looks good, Maybe a little brighter, yep. And let's set the stroke color from white to brownish, yeah, that's good, and not too thick, right? That looks good, about three three pixels big, at least in the comp size that I'm working in, which is uh, which is uh, 640 by 360, it's 16 by 9 size. And let's get into the polystar shape here and make some changes to it. So the first thing I want to do is get into the polystar path and I'll set the number of points to 10. And you could play around and figure what works for you, but 10 is good, it's a nice number, it's got points going in all directions, but not too many so that it's overwhelming. And the next thing I'm going to do is set the inner radius down. I really want it low. In fact, I'm going to set it down to zero so that what we've got is this really tight star shape. But what we're really going to do is blow up our outer radius to something insane. And let me see if I can do this. If I hold down shift while I do this, that will really bump it up. Let's go to like 2200 if I remember. So that really brings it out. If I were to zoom out, you can see how big this is. But that's really, uh, as it stands, not much to look at. What we really want to play with is the roundness of it. So I'm going to set the outer roundness up a bunch. And what you can see this does is, if we pull back, you can see it creates this round shape. But fortunately, this because it's so far out, you can't really see it starting to bend and curve back over onto itself. So this close, you know, we can get that outer roundness up a bunch. I'll set that to 95 and we've got a good something good to work with here maybe you might sort of be seeing the roundness sort of happening here but I think overall it, it's pretty invisible so that's good I kinda like the way that looks the next thing I want to do is add in um, a twist to this so see what, what, what I want to do is have this sort of swirly shape and to make that happen there's uh, something we can add in here called and you can't see this on your screen but it's called twist so I'll choose that, and uh, once I've done that, twirl down the twist, and let's really crank this sucker up. Um, why don't I set this angle up? As you can see, as we start to do this, it gets more and more twisty, but I'm thinking, yeah, about 250 or so is good. There we go. We have a nice looking twisty look. And now... See, one thing I obviously don't like is that little brown tight spot in the middle. And the truth is, uh, I would normally have like an actor sort of blocking it. So if you have your text, your actor, that's probably the best way to do that. Um, and I'm going to now add in a new solid, sort of create a glow coming out from the center. So I'll create a new solid, and I'll make it white. 
and I'll make sure it's the comp size. And I'm going to name this actually, I'll name it Glow, so I know what it is, and I'll click OK. Now the next thing I'll do is use the mask tools, now making sure this time that I do have the layer selected, otherwise it will create a shape layer. I'll double click on that, and that'll create a nice oval mask, which is too big for what I want, but if I double click on it, I can now grab hold of the mask, and I'll hold down Control Alt and Shift or Command Alt and Shift or Command Option Shift on a Mac. Get something like this. Maybe I'll hold me down Alt and Command or Control. I get something a little better like that. That works. And I'll click Enter to keep the mask at that size. And I'm going to hit F to reveal the mask's feather property. And I'll feather this up a bunch. Let's see how good. Uh, I don't know, bring it up even higher, double that, 150. That's pretty good. Okay, and that works for now. Um, I might want to play with the mass, with this solid's opacity at some point, but for now it's working for me, so I'll keep it as is. Um, you know what, I say that, but I'm looking at it. Why don't I set its opacity to something like 50% maybe? That's good. I just want something subtle. So let me bring this back up. I'm a bit wishy-washy when it comes to this stuff. I like to play around. So that's something. We've got a bit of a glow there. It's kind of a haze. It works for me. And okay, good. Now what I want to do is make our swirly thing uh, rotate. And I could keyframe this, but I'm going to use an expression instead. So let me hit R to reveal the rotation. And I'll Alt or Option click on the rotation property. And I'll type in time times 20. The time expression is really cool. First person I ever saw use it was Harry Frank and uh, I just loved it since then. Essentially what it does is tell the property to go one unit per second. So if I had just written time then this would rotate one degree every second. By typing time times 20 I get 20 degrees every second. So as you can see when I get to the one second mark we're at 20 degrees. Next, I want to add an adjustment layer. And I'll choose Layer, New, Adjustment Layer. And what this is, is an invisible layer that affects every layer below itself. So if I put an effect on it, it'll affect everything below it. So um, I'm going to choose to add a hue and saturation effect so that I can change the colors of both the background solid and the swirly thing. So Effect and Color Correction, Hue and Saturation and I will go to the first frame and I'll set the channel range I've set a keyframe right there with the current value of zero rotations and zero degrees and I'll go to my last frame and I'll set the channel range again I'll set the master hue to one rotation and zero degrees which is a full circle but if we travel through time here we can see that over time our colors are changing okay and then all we've got left to do at this point for the really simple version is to add our actress in. And there we go. There she is. Quick RAM preview. And then you can add the groovy text that you want to add. I used a font called Shagadelic that I found online for free. And uh, there you go. And that's, uh, that's that. Okay. Now, after I did this, I wasn't uh, too impressed with myself. But I was like, hey, you know, that's a nice little tip. But I figured, let's play around, see what we come up with. And uh, let's do that. So the first thing I want to do is uh, duplicate my shape layer. That's this one right here. And I'm going to set its transfer mode from normal to multiply. And right now you can't really see what it's doing, but it's going to create a nice sort of effect where they overlap each other and get darker areas, but otherwise pretty much looks the same. And let's get into the shape properties here, into the contents, the polystar, and I'll set the twist from 250 to negative 250 so that it turns the shape in the opposite direction. Now already you can start seeing where we're going with this. And I also want to change the expression that I've done just so that I can get a different rotation with it. So let me hit R for rotation, which uh, brings up the rotation property. And here's our expression. And I'll set it to time times 10 which is going to be half the speed. And if we do a quick RAM preview, 
you can see we've got two different speeds, so the shapes are constantly changing, constantly shifting, and we get something nice. Uh, I really like that. Really dig it. Yeah, I said that. Okay, let's move on. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is play around and make this look a little more, I want to say, organic and less, you know, defined as, as these are. But, uh, you know, I forgot to mention when I duplicated the layer, I hit Control D or Command D on a Mac. And if you're a beginner, you might have missed that step. So hopefully that will help you and you haven't tried to watch that over and over again, figuring out how I did that. For the rest of you, well, you know. Anyhow, so the next thing I want to do is just make our duplicate shape layer invisible just for now so I can see what results I'm getting when I work with my, uh, when I work with uh, Trap Code Shine. I'll also hide the actress for now just because I'd like to have as clean a screen as I can. And what I'll do is I will select this shape layer, the first one, and I'll choose Effect Trap Code Shine. And I'll go into the options here and I will set the colorize to none. So it will use the original colors. And I'll set the transfer mode from none to add. And it creates these glows along with the original shape. And then I'm going to get into my ray length property here and double this. It doesn't really make much of it. I mean, you can go much higher if you want, but I like that. I played around with it and I found that 8 was a good number, at least for the size at which I'm working. You may need to go much higher or much lower, depending on what you're trying to do. But I really want to see more of those rays and see them more intensely. So I'm going to boost the light up uh, a bunch. So you can see that definitely does something. Why don't I set that to uh, 15? All right, that really creates a nice bright spot. And maybe this uh, circular glow area is a bit too strong, so I might take out its opacity and bring it down to 45%. It's not really making much of a difference, so maybe it's more of a question of the of the size. I can bring it down a tiny bit. Not going to make much of a difference, but something very subtle. Anyway, I think we're good there. And what I'll do next is bring back my duplicate layer that I was hiding, and I'll hit E to reveal effects, and I will copy the trap code shine effect by selecting it and choosing Command C or Control C, and then I'll paste it by hitting Control V, and now we've got something that looks really cool. And uh, I'll just bring our actress back from Crowd Control, and uh, we also shift this down in time so she's already dancing, and we hit the uh, ramp preview key there, and looking good, looking good. Not a bad trade-off for watching 30 minutes of dolphins with jetpacks, I'll tell you that. Anyway, if you don't have Trap Code Shine, you can download a free trial at the Red Giant software website. Just click on Downloads and Trial Versions, and that'll get you there. As always, I hope this helps you in your groovy work. Once again, I'm Aaron Rabinowitz for RedGiantTV.com. See you next time.